Hey everybody and welcome. So it's time to do some simulations with a mesh. We're going to create a pile of bullet casings. Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, we're in Maya, as you can see, and in front of you is an image of a bullet casings on a floor. Now, if you've ever seen an action movie, you know, Jason Statham, Sylvester Stallone, and so forth, you know these scenes where you have bullet casings everywhere. Now, I received a question to do a scene with bullet casings without uh, you having to put them in manually one by one and position them and so forth. So we're going to set up a mesh a dynamic network, uh, which will allow us to do that automatically, right? So that said, let's get rid of this image right here. We don't need that. <clears throat> I guess you know what that looks like, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to uh, display and show all because I created a casing for the purpose of the video. Nothing fancy, uh, just find a reference online and make one. Uh, it's not too hard and uh, that's what we're gonna work with. Now make sure you delete the history and freeze transformations and then this is what we're gonna start with. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to create a mesh network. So we're gonna go up to the FX menu, top left corner, then we're gonna go up to the mesh tab and we're gonna create a mesh network. Now, as we do that, by default, we get a lineup of 10 of these casings. And we're gonna open up the uh, attribute editor by hitting Control A to see how we can manipulate that, right? Now, the idea is for the casings to fall down on the floor and kind of, you know, move around until they uh, stay stationary, and that will be our scene. So, with a couple of things we can change here. First of all, I want a randomizer. I got 10 uh, casings right now. I can go in here and let me increase that to let's say, I don't know, 50 or so. So we've got quite a few, and as you can see, they're all packed together right now. And then we're gonna go into the mash tab. We're gonna create this randomizer. Click on it and then click on that. Now we have the option here to change the current position. So looking at the position X, Y, and Z, right? I can change this position by pulling this out quite a bit. And we'll do that in Z as well. And you can even do that in Y if you want to, like that. Uh, not rotation, sorry, this guy. All right. So looking at this, this is what we have so far. Now we can also go in and we can change the rotation. So we'll do a little bit of this. We'll do a little bit of this just so it's all extremely random, okay? And then the skill, of course, we can leave that alone. We want the skill to be the skill. So this is basically what you would have. Now, what we wanna do is have these all fall down based on gravity, hit a floor, and kind of end up wherever they end up, right? Okay, so what else? We're gonna leave this all alone. We're gonna go in here, and uh, let's see, that looks okay for now too. Then we're going to go to the mash tab and what we need next is a dynamic node. So we're going to click on that and then we're going to click on add dynamic node. Now as we do that, you'll see that we now have this yellow floor down here. We need that because these bullets need to end up somewhere. So that looks okay. Uh, let's see, we need to change a couple more things. The collision shape right here is set to automatic and we want to change that to mesh. Okay, now you can go with box, and when you do that, each shell will be treated as a box, basically. And we'll try this for now. Uh, if the shells or if the casings are cutting into each other, we might need to change that. So that's okay. We can play with friction. We can play with the rolling friction, you know, how far you want them to roll off and so forth. Uh, and, you know, basically all of these settings will help you to uh, play around with this. The mass, um, you know, if they're too bouncy, you can change that. These are basically settings if you want to uh, keep it dynamic. We're going to make it stationary once it's done. So this should be good for now. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pay some attention to my animation slider. 
Now down here, it's set to uh, a number of frames that's way too low. Uh, it might take some time for this to be completed. So I'm gonna go way up to 5,000 frames. And I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom right corner here, open up my animation settings and make sure it's set to play every frame, okay? Now that we have all this, let's do a final check. Let's see if everything looks okay. Um, and I'm specifically looking at this guy right here. So it says distribution type is linear. I don't want that. I'm gonna do that based on mesh, all right? Let's see what else we got here. Okay, that's good. All right, so we have all this. We're gonna set this up in the middle a little bit here and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna hit play. Here we go. Okay, well, you can see that they're acting a bit weird and uh, I suspect that that's based on the fact that I selected box instead of mesh. So let's fix that. We're just gonna hit stop, jump back to the beginning, hit control A. We're gonna change the collision shape to uh, mesh. Here we go, close that out and let's do this again. That looks much better. All right. So like I said, it might take a while for everything to settle down, but once it has, you have a nice stack of bullets. Uh, wall bullets, bullet casings. And uh, like I said, you don't have to go out and position them manually and so forth. Now wow. you might have a situation where there may be one or two uh, casings that are actually cutting into each other. It's a very easy fix if that happens. Uh, I usually let this play out all the way because that will sort itself usually. But if not, what you can simply do is just uh, stop right here. Let's say you're happy with all this. Drag select everything go to edit, delete by type and history, right? Now you can go in, delete your mesh network. You can select this as one object. You can go to your modeling menu, go to mesh, separate, and then you can go in and take that individual casing and kind of move that around. So go to modify center pivot, you can move it and that's how you can clean that up. But this will save you a lot of time if you want to set up a scene like that. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this little video. If you want to stay notified, hit that little bell thing. If you haven't subscribed just yet and you'd be willing to do that, that would make my day. And that said, thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.